नमस्कार सत्याकाल राम राम साहब खंबा गणी वड़कम आप सभी को ऑल टीम वीडियो में फिर से स्वागत है वी हैव पी वी आर नरसिम्ह राव वंस अगेन विद आस एंड द रीजन आई गॉट सर बिकॉज द वर्ल्ड इज गोइंग इन अ टर्म ऑयल इट इज लिटरली लाइक सिटिंग ऑन अ वॉल कैनो एंड वी डोंट नो वेयर द सिचुएशन इज हेडिंग द यूरोप इज इन क्राइसिस एंड यू नो दोज ऑल दोज पॉइंट्स सो आई स्ट्रेट अवे टेक यू टू सर Sir, the Israel-Gaza uh, war is only intensifying, and uh, how do we see it going from there? Yes, sir. Over to you. Thank you. Yeah, as you said, world is in a turmoil. But to put things in perspective, I don't really think this is really the peak or anything close to the peak. I'm afraid this is very early stages of what I talked about earlier as. a war that is almost guaranteed to take place in 2030 2031 time frame because there are planetary combinations in the 2030 late 2030 time period which are similar to the combinations at the time of the mahabharata war and it's very likely that there will be a major war and major wars don't happen suddenly there are several events that lead up to them so for example russia's invasion of ukraine developed one front where the us nato alliance is fighting the china russia alliance and as i said in the past china russia and also iran and north korea these will become closer and closer through this decade and that will be one axis that will be taking part in the major war that is coming in 2030 and on the other side it will be us israel nato and also india getting involved so this will be the other side and that will be the winning side this is why i mentioned in the past that india should strengthen the relations with us without ditching ussr because strategically we have a long relationship with ussr so india should not uh, get out of that partnership but slowly strengthen the us partnership because at some stage russia will pick china ahead of india because there is another though russia is a friend india and china are really enemies so there will be a stage where there will be several wars developing in the world and russia needs china more than india and around that time india will by that time india will have to have a strong relationship with us so that they can be independent of ussr uh, russia sorry there's no ussr anymore so india has been doing that really admirably uh, sri jay shankar has been navigating the international politics very well and now on that note i'm very glad that indian government has taken a firm stand for israel even though one can make an argument for the suffering of palestinian people especially as the war progresses the suffering of the palestinian people will come to the front and there will be some media outcry about it but in the in the in the war that will develop through this decade and peak in the 2030 time frame israel will be on the winning side and india is destined to fight alongside us and israel so it is very good that india is standing firmly Uh, with a with a hand hand of friendship extended to Israel. Now coming to the actual uh, situation in the Middle East, uh, I, I think I, last May or so, I or maybe this May, I did an interview with the Alternate Media Channel, and I mentioned that the the long term prospects of the Middle East are bad. When you ask me about the future of Islam, I said that I don't have a basis to predict for religion, but looking at those countries. the long term charts as well as the annual charts of those countries i see lot of suffering lot of chaos and turbulence in those countries in this time frame in the in, the, in this decade and when when there is a major war in the 2030 time frame those countries will really suffer and islam may, islam may basically uh, face serious challenges in uh, global challenges as well as from within basically as the governments that rule these countries become weak the people who are more logically oriented and more agnostically oriented they will revolt against some of the uh, tight control over the religious leaders and politics so they, so overall over the next decade the countries in the middle east will face a lot of challenges and as far as israel itself is concerned even though i said that they will end up on the winning side in a major war that will slowly develop over this decade they have a really troublesome decade ahead uh 
Uh, right now, there is a lot of support for them, whether it is from India or USA. There is a lot of support for Israel. Uh, but the thing is, if you, if you go back to 9-11, when 9-11 happened, when US invaded Afghanistan and later they had the uh, military action in Iraq uh, because they believed that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction, there was a lot of public support in initially, but it slowly withered away. And also, those wars seemed to end in a positive result very quickly, but slowly uh, the, the opposition became stronger. Basically, they went into hiding, kept fighting guerrilla wars, and there was support from outside uh, actors. And then it, it ended up dragging on for a long time and then ended up basically with an embarrassment for US. Similarly, uh, looking at Israel's long-term charts as well as the annual charts over the next several years, I'm afraid that Israel will be very successful in the short term in this war, but in the long term, this will drag on. Even, even though it may seem like they are winning very easily, there may be outside actors who will support their enemies and also multiple enemies can collude as, uh, as this war uh, drags on. I'm afraid that even though this may start as an attack on Gaza, an invasion of Gaza to basically cleanse Gaza of Hamas, Hamas may go into hiding and they may, just like Al-Qaeda did in Afghanistan, but there may also be other forces getting involved. I'm afraid that uh, based on the annual charts, I'm afraid that Lebanon may also get involved. The, the, the terrorist force there, I think is called Hezbollah. Hezbollah with Iran support may also get involved in this war uh, slowly. And also, I'm afraid, looking at Jordan's annual charts, Jordan may also get involved in this war in the, in the uh, next couple of years. So this may end up being a multi-front war that Israel has to fight with several nations. And then I'm afraid that the Iran-Russia axis that I mentioned, China-Russia-Iran axis, they may they may covertly support these forces that are fighting against Israel, and just like the Ukraine Russia war, it started as Russia's invasion of Ukraine, but slowly it developed into a proxy war between China Russia axis and US. So it's basically a proxy war between China and US. Similarly, I'm afraid this war over the next few years will, even though it may seem to end quickly, it will actually drag on. And it will end up developing into a proxy war between US and NATO on one side, which will be supporting Israel. And then the uh, Russia, China, Iran, North Korea axis, they may be giving a lot of indirect support, uh, tactical support, and even some covert operational support to the terrorists, Hamas and Hezbollah terrorists, as well as some groups. I, I don't even know the names yet, but some groups may come up in Jordan and they may basically attack Israel from the Jordan border. So there is a lot of chaos and turbulence that is unfortunately staring at Israel in the, in the coming decade. But unfortunately, some people may say, we want peace, let's go for peace, etc. But as I said so many times in the past, this decade is not a decade of peace. This decade is a decade of war. But what we should hope for is not really peace, but we should hope for sustainable peace, dharmic peace. The peace that we had in the last few decades in the world is not really sustainable and it's not based on dharma. It is, it is basically neither righteous nor sustainable. So um, what we should hope for and pray for is the peace that will come in 2030s after the major war that I mentioned, which is almost inevitable. The peace that will dawn on earth will be a more sustainable peace that is based on the principles of dharma, righteousness and balance. So, I mean, I, I, don't, I, I don't want to be very pessimistic, but in the short term, for the next few years, I am pessimistic that there will be any peace. This is another front. Ukraine is one front in this war between these two axes that I mentioned, US, NATO, Israel, India is one axis. Of course, all the players may not be involved, but eventually it will be, that will be one axis. And China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea is the other axis. So one front in the, in the fight between these two axes is the Ukraine war. And this Middle East war is unfortunately, unfortunately going to build, going to develop 
the next front and towards 2030 closer to 2030 in probably late 2020s another front will open in the in the southeast asia and that will be the most dangerous one most critical one so basically with the middle east and the eurasia and then finally southeast asia all the fronts opening that will set the stage for the big confrontation between the superpowers in 2030 so this this is setting the stage for something bigger as you said world war 3 uh, in 2029 30 but at the same time i'm looking at another major thing which is uh, growing inside you know it's boiling inside uh, that is towards china and for the viewers i'm telling them hold on we have some very important questions we are just trying to pe- put the pieces together so that the story so we can take the story towards the end so china people are talking that china is going to disintegrate and probably that's another reason uh, the world is boiling right now yeah this is actually my long standing prediction for many years that china in, in the period 2020 to 2036 uh, during that period china will disintegrate and at least become five parts and uh, but the thing is i don't think it's happening anytime soon people may look at the financial problems the economic troubles in china and think that it is imminent i don't believe it is imminent china is a strong power uh, strong military power strong strong global power with presence in many countries and my expectation is through this decade china will actually increase their strength whereas us may become weaker and weaker through infighting through Uh, political disturbance, domestic political disturbance, US will become weaker. Uh, they will be more indecisive during this decade. Whereas China will be more decisive. China will be stronger, and their influence across the world will increase further. But the thing is, it is it will rise rise so high that it will become more confident to engage in this confrontation with US uh, towards late twenties and basically resulting in this major war. in 2030 31 time frame but as a result of that war and also as a result of all the economic tensions uh reaching a peak through this decade through all these confrontations all these machinations of various countries and also the thing is all these fronts in the war that are opening up they will have an impact on the economy world economy so all these things will basically combine to create lot of unrest within china and if you look at china the stability that is within china is a, is like a pack of cards the it's not like people in china are really happy they are happy with the economy they are happy with their lives but when basically that is is no longer guaranteed all the unrest that has piled up over decades will just explode and the the control the communist party of china has over china will collapse but my time frame for that is in the 2030s not necessarily though i said in the past between 2020 and 2036 i never really pin down a time even now i don't want to do that but the thing is it will be in 2030s not it will be after the war and not before the war the analogy i want to give is china of today is similar to germany of 1920s 1930s 1940s etc it was basically uh, rising as a superpower as a military power and it was threatening to overtake uk uk was the unquestioned superpower of the world at the time and germany was challenging to overtake uk and become the new number one country in the in the world and also overtake much of europe and similarly uh, not necessarily in a, in the same military way but china is expanding across asia africa south america taking over not necessarily occupying like germany wanted to do at that time but this is more subtle basically in terms of in economic terms uh, with both economic and military presence china is trying to do what germany tried to do in 1930s and and uh, us of today is like the uk of 1930s and 1940s it was basically a superpower that is spread thin and also uh, becoming weaker and weaker and that is basically what is happening right now so just like germany before the world war 2 ended and even through world war 2 part of world war 2 germany seemed so dominant in the world similarly i expect that china will 
continue its dominance in the world and it will become more and more assertive of that dominance assertive of his power more and more self confident but the thing is at some stage that self confidence will will cross over into overconfidence and then they will they will end up uh, chewing more than uh, biting more uh, chewing more than what they can swallow and then that basically when uh, things will uh, reach a point of no return for china but i don't expect a break up of china in the within this decade within the next few years certainly but it is definitely happening before 2036 in my opinion interesting since next to china is our own bharat how are you seeing when all these political things are going on because one is israel if i look at the world map this is somewhere israel now we have yeah. covered china now india and then we will definitely come to the later part of the world ji are we will we be able to fight hamas like forces that are raising its head in india and they are in multiple places yeah Uh, fortunately for us we are in a much better position than uh, let's say israel is israel is surrounded by all these countries that are hostile to it and some of them even believe whether they officially state it or not some of them may even officially state it but some of them do believe that israel has no right to exist they they basically don't believe in uh, a state for jews they so compared to them india india has a much better position in my opinion but the thing is at the same time the challenge for india is the uh, the, the forces that are basically that that want to wage a jihad against india and basically they, they want to go back to the old days when there were forces there were rulers who were basically happy to convert india to uh, a different religion basically to suppress and oppress the rights of hindus so they want to go back to those times when moguls ruled india they basically are before moguls there were other uh, rulers that ruled india so they want to go back to those times and th- those those forces are there and those forces are uh, do receive support from external agents and outside actors foreign actors but the thing is uh, one of the major forces working for the disintegration of india was pakistan historically and i expect that over the coming decade pakistan will become weaker and weaker so of course when a when a country becomes weak when a nuclear power becomes weak they will as a last ditch effort they will increase their efforts to basically target their neighbor so uh, pakistan disintegrating is not really great news for india in the short term it can basically increase the challenge but the thing is if we just persist after a while they will basically below the threshold for being able to make any difference uh, for the operations that are in india so pakistan i expect over the next decade will become so weak that they will be a non factor and the other foreign actor that was supporting pakistan implicitly was us us was a, an ally of pakistan whereas india used to be an ally of russia in the in the cold war time so old habits die hard so there are some forces in state and also some forces within the uh, ruling government that basically want to weaken india even though the way global politics works is even though somebody is your friend you don't want them to become too strong you want to basically keep them in check so you do help their enemies that are working from within so there will be some forces within us who are openly as well as secretly aiding these forces that are working to for the disintegration of india who are trying to weaken india so that will continue in spite of the growing bonhomie between indian and us governments under the hood these activities will continue because this is how geopolitics works it's not like you just flip a switch and everybody starts being good to you because you want to be good as well as you want to be bad at the same time so but the thing is over this decade the indo us relationship will transform to such a level that all these forces within the deep state of us that are covertly supporting these elements will slowly become weaker and weaker their funding will become lesser and lesser and this activity will become uh, will start to dry up but the thing is i do expect that in the next few years there is a challenge to india but luckily for india there is a huge muslim population in india and 
there are a lot of muslim leaders in india who are not really supportive of this this kind of activities there are, there is a certain percentage of the population that secretly admires these activities and wants to support but a significant percentage of leaders uh, especially among the pasmanda muslim community they they don't want these activities and they do want to support development and basically uh, don't don't support terrorism and what we need is though they don't have a lot of voice it is basically the people people like oic who have voice so what what bjp and the rulers of india need to do is enable these leaders enable these moderate muslim leaders who stand up against uh, terrorism in the name of islam and quran and and basically make them more prominent and make them become the face of muslims in india because the muslim population of india is really large and it will remain so what you need to do is strengthen the moderate aspect of muslims and weaken the uh, the aggressive interpretation and also those who are intent on disintegrating india and i do expect that through this decade as chaos uh, grows across the world indians will become more and more appreciative of the relatively stable uh, uh, environment that they are able to live in and people will basically people will fall in line and there will be there will be more patriotism the nationalism towards an idea of india or bharat will basically increase over this decade and especially as as we prepare towards this war in the late 2020s india will really india will really rise india's prominence in the world will really be on the rise and india's sense of self respect self esteem and pride will really increase and this identity of bharat as a as a tolerant nation where various religions coexist happily that will really become strong but the thing is that will be rooted in sadhan dharma rather than appeasement of one minority and tolerating the oppression of the majority it will be basically majority will get their due at the same time minorities will not be oppressed and then any voices that are trying to cause uh, cause some discontent in the minorities with this narrative that minorities are being oppressed in india will be dispelled by voices from within minor- minority so i expect that all this all this is already happening but on a really small scale it's not visible what you see outside india is the narrative that india has oppression of minorities so this narrative will shift there will be more positive narratives about india towards the end of this decade particularly 2027 28 29 that time period is really a great time for india and india will be positioned for playing a major role in the war that is going to come up so i i am concerned i think india should not let god indian government should not drop the god but i am optimistic that things will pan out well for india through this decade right. so there is, there are two very small questions i would like are we going to get control of our temples and will the constitution of india change because a lot of people are working behind the scenes for reforming the constitution Uh, because that is the place from where the authority for all the power to the government to the supreme court to the executive to the uh, other bodies uh, autonomous bodies uh, starts from yes sir my my expectation is i will actually try to uh, cover this in a in a video dedicated to india basically the last 1000 years and the next 200 years i'll talk about india a 1200 based on a 1200 year chart for india so i'll try to talk about it in more detail but uh, in a nutshell my expectation is uh, there will be slow progress in the next few years the focus will more be on uh, development financial economic development of india and keeping mm. india safe in a really turbulent world keeping india relatively prosperous in a world that is struggling that will be the focus rather than hindu agendas uh, for example freeing of the temples temples have been Uh, because all these laws were made during islamic rule later during british rule basically other when other religions were oppressing hindus all these rules were made and they made into the constitution and they made into the laws so some of the some of the laws are really anti hindu and i do expect changes but i don't expect in the next couple of years when yogi adityanath becomes the 
Prime Minister of India in mid 2020s, uh, mid to late 2020s. That is when we start seeing a lot of progress. Not because he is the right person, but because uh, around that time the right environment will be there. All the other things. Uh, Sri Narendra Modi's focus is more on development uh, of all Indians, not just Hindus, but development of all Indians. And during Yogi's time, India will be will have made so much progress materially that you can address some of these long-standing issues. Particularly in the 27, 28, 29 time frame, I expect that there will be more progress along these lines of freeing Hindu temples and basically uh, stopping the minority appeasement and uh, giving due rights to the majority instead of suppressing them in the name that you are majority. You want to be pro-minority. So all that equality, real equality will come in the late 2020s in my opinion. So for a few years, it will be on the back burner. There will be some slow progress, but it will relatively be on the back burner. And it's not really a bad idea because there are bigger fish to fry right now for India as a country. Right. Sir, I move on to Europe now because as this Israel Hamas thing is going on, Europe is also churning. In fact, today, this is, I think, uh, I, I have seen tidbits where the uh, Europeans have started uh, coming out now. Today, British patriots came and they opposed uh, these Hamas supporters. I mean, there was fist fight and they were fighting also. And police was also engaging with them. Do you think this, uh, this immigrant and these people who have gone to Europe, Will they be able to take over Europe in coming years? Uh, or will Europe be able to fight back? I do not think that there is any takeover of Europe by any immigrants who came in the last few decades. Europe will be Europe. But the mundane charts, the, the long-term charts as well as the short-term charts do suggest a period of great turmoil for Europe. So all these forces within Europe, the, the, the liberal wings and the conservative wings, the left wing and right wing in various countries will have strong uh, collisions in their ideologies. And also some of the demographic change that happened in the last couple of decades because of these Afghanistan war, Iraq war, and fight against ISIS, etc. These will, these will play out. And I do expect that there will be huge turmoil, whether it's France, whether it's Germany, or even UK. All these top countries of Europe they will they will really struggle for the for the coming decade they will also play a role in the 2030 2031 war but the thing is they will not be as prominent it will be mostly us israel and india the top players on one side and europe basically going along with them and then like i said iran north korea china russia on the other side so europe will be a weak power it was already like becoming weaker in their power through uh, late 1900s, but I think during this decade, they'll become even weaker and there'll be a lot of inner fighting, internal fight and all these divisive forces that have cr crept in into Europe over the last uh, couple of decades, they will receive some domestic support. Domestic left wings will support them and the right wings will firmly oppose them, but they will also uh, take up some agenda items which are considered uh, kind of bigoted. So basically, the population will be split between these two ideologies. Neither side will be perfect. Both sides will have some good points, but both sides will have some ugly points. So it will be, people will be torn and, the, and there won't be any clear majorities. So public opinion will basically be divided and these countries will struggle to find a clear direction. They'll be swinging from one direction to another direction and become weaker and weaker. Yeah. So coming to Canada, we have had so many talks on Canada recently because of how Justin Trudeau has behaved and what do you say, un, in an unparliamentary way. Yes, sir. Yeah, I don't want to make any subjective comments, subjective, I don't want to share my subjective views. But the thing is, based on Justin Trudeau's uh, horoscope, he has a really, uh, he has really bad transits. At the time when all this unfolded, he had really bad transits. Saturn was aspecting his Lagna exactly. And his moon was being transited by a couple of uh, problematic planets. So basically, uh, he had this is a really bad time for him. He will he will really struggle. And even if you ignore Trudeau as a person, if you look at the countries themselves, if you look at the India's long-term charts as well as 
annual charts and compare them with Canada's charts. Canada is not really a major power as they may imagine themselves to be. They're actually, uh, because they're a neighbor of US and had a historically strong relation with US, that's why they may think that they're relevant on the world scene. They're not really that relevant in the in the in geopolitics. They're a small player, honestly. And India, the charts do suggest that India foreign relations will continue to be strong over this decade. And I'm not really concerned that. See, one thing is, I do expect that India will conduct covert operations against. Uh, terrorists who are working for uh, in being in so I'll be some covert operations in uh, outside of India shores. So for all you know, India may have done or may do in future some covert operations in Canada or or Europe. Uh, but the thing is, these things are handled behind the scenes. And if somebody really has a proof for it, they should basically negotiate and use that proof as a leverage in making some deals. Uh, behind closed doors. Justin Trudeau, from that point of view, what Justin Trudeau did was not really a wise thing. And that is very clear from his chart. He was under, he's under tremendous duress. For the last several months and for the next few months, he's under tremendously bad transits. He's under duress, a lot of turmoil. He just could not deal with it and made a bad decision. He made a bad call. But one thing I can say is, even if, and one more thing, it is quite possible that some of the intelligence that came may have come from US initially, but it doesn't mean US wanted to throw India under the bus because there are some people who have this theory that US wants to throw India under the bus and US is proactively sharing this intelligence and US is uh, anti-India. Like I said earlier, there will be some forces within US deep state that are anti-India, that are working against the current Indian administration and also working towards India's weakening. So it is possible that some data was shared by them with Canada, but the intention of the top leadership of US is not really to cause a public spat between Canada and U India. It is basically to create some leverage so that Canada investigates and gets some leverage to negotiate some deals with India. And this did not pan out the way those forces wanted. But the one thing I can say astrologically, India will not be under trouble. This will not really become uh, a, a problem for India. India's foreign relations will continue to be strong through this year, through the next year, and through the next few years. And India will strong, continue to be assertive and aggressive, and other countries will respect India. So, and also looking at Canada, Canada's charts don't look good for the next few years. Canada has a lot of turmoil in their own homeland, unfortunately. So Canada has their own trouble, troubles to sort, uh, sort out. So I expect that this issue, which became a big headline news a couple of weeks back, is just a non-issue. It will become a non-issue over time. Uh, even if there is some proof Canada or US has against India, it will not basically be used to embarrass India publicly. It will basically be just buried behind closed doors. And then India and US will continue to become closer. One more thing is, as I said earlier, India-US partnership will grow through this decade and it will be the defining partnership, just like the US-UK partnership in the World War II was the defining partnership in World War II. Similarly, basically I see India as what US was in 1940s uh, in the Second, Second World War. So India-US partnership is destined to grow. So these small distractions will not cause any problems. This relationship will strong, grow, grow strong. India will be fine. And as a matter of fact, uh, the focus on Khalistani movement, which is practically non-existent in India, and mostly uh, it is it exists only in Canada. So it may become a problem for Justin Trudeau over the, over the next couple of years. So overall, my conclusion is India is fine. Don't worry about India. It is Canada that needs to worry. And Canada will have a lot of troubles in the coming years. Can Canada disintegrate also? Can there be another country called Khalistan in Canada? Because there have been... I, uh, have, early, early I don't time. have an opinion on that. Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. I don't have an opinion on that. I don't want to speak about disintegration of Canada. But the thing is, 
one thing i can say is canada will have lot of challenges for the next few decades uh, economic challenges and unrest in the country and also even though canada is a very progressive country very left wing country compared to us uh, the left wing will face severe challenges because of some aggressive steps they have taken in the last uh, few years they will face huge backlash and the conservatives will become stronger so basically there will be political polarization along the lines you see in us right now there will be political polarization and justin trudeau will have a fight of his life to be reelected in the next election basically he is he is running he is he is having sade sathi the seven of years of saturn saturn and troubles and some severe saturn problems so he will he will he will have his own challenges to deal with so he wanted to use india as a as a as a leverage not leverage but basically he wanted to distract basically he wanted to use india as a distraction to get out of his troubles and it did not work india will not india nobody can use india as a distraction because india will just hammer them he realizes it now but he still has all those unresolved headaches that he needs to deal with over the next couple of years sir right in the beginning of video you said that uh, the the planets are stationed in a way that they were stationed during the mahabharat so during mahabharat during the, shit, which is oh yeah yeah mahabharat yeah yeah not now but 2030 like 2030 you will have yeah. similar so, similar uh, uh, similar positioning of the planets so mm -hmm. that time kurukshetra was the center mahabharat war yeah. yeah so well like now which place will it be middle east because everything seems to be going around in middle east only most likely middle east but i don't really have a have an intelligent opinion on it astrologically i am afraid there will be multiple fronts in which there will be a big fight brewing and how those fronts converge in way which will become the main theater of main epicenter i'm not 100% sure but looking at the annual charts of various countries what i said like 20 years back is that when there is a major war in the 2030 period the middle east and iran area that is middle east to all the way up to iran that will be the epicenter of main theater of that war but the thing is it's not it's a is is a direct conclusion based on the annual charts of various countries there is no clear technique that allows us to find what will be the theater of war mm -hmm. so and uh, this two angles which you men mentioned on one side will be uh, iran turkey mm -hmm. qatar russia china other will be usa israel uk nato india all the countries i'm not 100% sure of qatar turkey etc i need to study them closely but one one thing i'm sure of is that axis will involve iran main players are china and russia of course china and russia uh, then iran and north korea those four will definitely be part of the axis who else joins them whether it's turkey or qatar that i have i'm still to wait on but these four will definitely be there on the other side us allies of us like nato israel and india they will definitely be there who else will join for example australia may join because we have the quad us australia india and japan coalition though it started as a financial economic uh, forum it may slowly become more militaristic so Australia and Japan may also join, but I haven't really studied that closely. But these three countries mainly: US, Israel, and India. These are just trying to get close to each other and be on the winning side in the coming war. And these are the countries which actually, if I look at uh, ideology-wise, is Mus Muslim, Islam, and communist country. Russia, China, both communist. Then yeah. Islam. It's like the. Uh, those two ideologies will be which have been supporting each other through thick and thin being one each other's protector are going to be defeated towards 2030 if i look at it in a very broad way yes yes, yes. unfortunately unfortunately we can see some coming together of the communist ideologies and some of the uh, jihadi ideologies over the over the last couple of decades and i'm afraid it will become more solidified more consolidated over the next few years but but the thing is at the end of this war i don't want to leave on a negative note at the end of this war when there will be tremendous destruction lot of lives lost which is unfortunate but the thing is after that the peace come that comes will be 
more sustainable and more dharmic it will be it will, it will be based on uh, not communism but capitalism but not clearly the the mindless capitalism that we had in the last few decades but a more dharmic capitalism where you uh, basically the uh, dharma has a concept of fairness inherently built in so it is fair but not by force basically not by somebody equalizing somebody basically engineering the society uh, doing social engineering but basically people will be uh, people will be more fair and there will be more rewards for being being fair i don't really have a clear idea of what it will be but we'll have a more um, more along the lines of what we had in india uh, a millennium or couple of millennia before ago so that kind of uh, uh, rule it will come across the world and that will be basically after this war so even though and also people will be more religious not necessarily following one religion you can follow christianity you can follow uh, hinduism you can follow judaism you can follow, you can go back to older religions pagan religions that were, that existed before the religions of kaliga as i call christianity and islam came and replaced them so those religions can basically come back again across the world and from my perspective they are all part of the large umbrella of sanatan dharma so various pagan religions will may come so overall sanatan dharma will flourish across the world and another another aspect is environmental awareness people have destroyed environment over the last few decades and what comes after this will be a, a way of life which is more nature friendly which is more attuned to nature like like was the case before industrial industrial revolution before uh, a couple of millennia back there were various civilizations across the world that lived in harmony with nature so there will be more elements of that in the in the in, in the post in the aftermath of the major war but one thing i want to point out is when i say environment matters the climate crisis is real i know that some friends on the right wing will oppose because right now especially in us it is very popular in the right wing to say the do oh, climax is just a hoax the thing is climate not climax climate is hoax climate crisis is a hoax climate crisis is real but the thing is what the left wing in us is doing is fake basically they are not really putting any real solutions on the table they are just using it to push fake solutions that cause more problems than solve any problems on the other hand some in the right wing refuse to believe that there is a global climate crisis but the thing is there is a global climate crisis and this also will benefit from the geopolitical change that is coming in the next decade so you mentioned about paganism even i uh, uh, sometime back i did uh, a video on paganism it's already started uh, you know uh, uh, it's already started erupting in uh, in britain itself the paganism secret societies they have started coming while the churches are being on sale like you know because they're not able to even take out the running costs of the churches nobody is visiting them especially the children who have been born after 2000 year 2000 so those signs those signs can be seen across world i guess yes but they are all really weak right now basically when something happens in a particular place it is shown as a headline news so we are aware of it but it's not like a good percentage of people are following those traditions is still a niche audience it's still a very small percentage of the audience so there are a lot of countries across europe where these traditions were really strong and in africa in south america even in north america uh, the native indian traditions so some of these traditions exist existed especially europe africa and south america these were very strong over the about the last several millennia but this is like you correctly said these are making a comeback but this is just for the news not for the mainstream there is no mainstream acceptance yet it's basically a small percentage of people who have independent thinking who are doing this but what i think is what i expect is based on some really long term charts what i expect is the faith in certain popular religions that arose in kaliga will become weaker and weaker over the coming decade people will become more agnostic and then some of these pagan religions will give them solace it will they, they will seem more logical than some of the modern religions that have replaced them sometimes by force 
over the last couple of millennia. So I do expect that these will come back, and it is a good time for Hindus to instead of fighting them, basically embrace them and accept them as a part of the large umbrella of Sanatan Dharma because they were. If you look at various of these traditions that existed across the world, you basically see that some of the traditions have similarities. Some of even the symbolism of various gods and goddesses have some similarities. even some stories have some similarity so my my thinking is the sanatan dharma spread across the world in old days and then after a major war let's say 5000 years back corrections were cut off and basically there were islands of various practices islands of knowledge with specific practices so basically they evolved separately that is why there are some similarities as well as some dissimilarities so it is a good time for Hindus to take lead and accept everybody into the umbrella and become the leader. And sir, uh, I'll ask you two very pointed questions. Russia-Ukraine war. Russia will win the war. It looks like that. It's it's already I mean already there. So it will win the war. And will Gaza uh, will be gone from the world's map? My expectation is even though the popular mainstream convention right now because. US will be distracted with the Israel Gaza war uh, Ukraine basically and also uh, there is a there is a deadlock in the US Congress and they could not uh, agree to basically fund Ukraine war the the conventional wisdom is that Ukraine is going to lose the war very soon but i will not be surprised if a way is found out found to basically get out of this situation and the ukraine war keeps simmering and keeps uh, remains as a front uh, developing into the 2030 war so i will not be surprised if if it continues as a proxy war and it's not it's not just a couple of weeks of closure as some experts and some conventional wisdom is saying right now i'm not i'm not convinced that it is done it's a done deal i'm afraid that it may seem like a done deal but it may come back if you look at afghanistan war or iraq war it seemed like it was a done deal but basically it came back it's like water under the mat if you push water under the mat it will basically come up from another location so i'm afraid that this front will continue to be active even though it may become inactive for a while it will become active again so this front will remain this proxy war i'm afraid is not done yet and as far as gaza is concerned uh what i expect is a quick victory for israel but other forces basically being involved and is basically uh, remaining active for a long time i expect that this will be a, this will be another forever war just like ukraine has been a forever war uh, this will be another forever war and uh, this will result in lot of losses for israel as well as their opponents and many players will eventually get involved in this war and this will remain an active theater an active front for the 2030 situation that is my expectation unfortunately okay. so what will happen to africa when all this turmoil is going on and i have a really focused on africa i will i will try to look at africa for future future videos I haven't looked at africa and so this is there this is something i'm asking because it's been going on in social media through a lot of videos and everything uh makkah has shivling of shivji uh, i mean um, obviously shivji shivji makkah has shivling number 1 and the middle east is gandhari's curse from mahabharata time this is uh, like how do you see these two ji sir i don't have an opinion on makka but uh, it's an interesting theory as far as gandhari's curse gandhari's curse is really for the afghanistan iran area because gandhar desa of the mahabharata times was basically the the capital was what is today known as kandahar this basically a, a change of kandahar so kandahar was the capital and basically spanned across iran afghanistan etc so uh, that area has simmered in crisis for a long time and i i expect so forgetting about the curse but basically based on astrology i expect that the way all the way from afghanistan iran iraq all the way till israel to gaza this whole area their annual charts and long term charts do show a lot of destruction in this decade so unfortunately there will be a lot of uh, loss of life and loss of property in this in that uh, place over the next uh, decade whether it is because of a particular curse or not 
it is tough to judge but remember another thing apart from such a curse karma is real whatever you do will come back to you so if a particular place was involved in using violence against other places for whatever reason to spread a religion or to spread an empire if a particular place used lot of violence against other places eventually violence will come to you and if you basically cause the ruin of some places some other place will cause the ruin of you so karma is is real and you you basically get back what what you uh, what you sow you reap, you reap what you sow so i'm and what astrology does is it shows when you sow what you reap uh, when, when you reap what you sow so i'm afraid the charts do suggest that there is tremendous suffering for the area all the way from the palestine israel area till afghanistan area that whole area is destined to suffer for this decade thank you so much sir for joining uh, sir also has a channel and he has a twitter link uh, in the description box and also in the chat section i will pin both the both the links so that people can follow uh, sir and see his because he makes makes lot of predictions even on his channel from time to time so thank you so much sir for joining jaane se pehle sabhi viewers se request hai please don't forget to like subscribe and share the all the media if you want to contribute you want to support you want to send a feedback all the links are given in the description box isi ke sath jai hind jai shri ram har har mahadev shukriya dhanyawad namaskar